Welcome. And yes, I wouldn't always put myself, and I think as we see always, I wouldn't put myself as the world authority on Bruce Lee. An inspiration, yes. Um, a keeper of the flame, yes. Um, world authority, never. I'll give you a little thing to start with that'll put you where I am at. Bruce Lee to me, as I always say to people, um, for people who don't know, is a long time you could ago, you could all be artists. And when you want to be an artist and you weren't very good, you could buy something called paint by numbers. And paint by numbers is a great thing because it tells you that you get your palette and you colour in the green bits. And then you colour in the blue bits. And then you colour in the white bits. And it all builds up into a picture. And for me, Bruce Lee is one of these pictures. Painting by numbers. Um, but there's a great thing to it. As much as I find out about Bruce Lee or look into his legacy and stuff like that, I always say to people, I go and talk to people or I go and do an interview with somebody and I colour in a little bit of picture and it fills in. But I never want to finish it. I never want to finish it. So that's my little journey. Is I've got this lovely painting of Bruce Lee, but I just keep colouring little bits in because I love to investigate and find out. Um, and I go all over. Um, I'll search anything. I will talk to anybody. I will talk to Scott Atkins um, that we heard of before. And it was lovely when Scott turned out and said, my inspiration for martial arts, Bruce Lee. When I talked to Gary Daniels, well-known sort of martial artist in the movies, how do you get into it? My hero's Bruce Lee. And I'm, I hear this all the time. I've talked to Tony Jaa. I've talked to Aiko, um, who does Indonesian Penjak Salat. He's just going to be in a, a film with Mark Warburg called Mile 22. All these people have been inspired to do martial arts by Bruce Lee. And I go, well, well where, where's that come from? And so I, I'll start you on the bottom and we'll work up to the top um, and we'll see where we go. And we'll see if we can inspire you about Bruce Lee. The situation is, is Bruce Lee has a picture and the problem is, is where I find is it all depends on where you see Bruce Lee. And some people have never been inspired by Bruce Lee. I've met some sort of true martial artists, as we would say, that are pre-Bruce Lee. And they go, oh, no, I just do martial arts because I do martial arts. I go, oh, oh. And so you didn't get into martial arts because, no, no, no. They were pre-73. So you think, oh, well, martial arts with them. But when you really talk to them and they're seventh degree black belts, I can still talk on their level. And I think, well, I ain't got a black belt. How is it I can talk on their level? And yet I ain't got a black belt. I think, well, I've done years of martial arts. I'm doing lots of training. So how can I talk on a black belt's level? It's because I understand. And I am inspired. And I think our first speaker was absolutely spot on. In the fact that where I'm coming from was I was inspired by Bruce Lee. So I'll first take you down that road of how was I inspired by Bruce Lee. And the situation was I was very poorly. Very, very poorly. I had asthma. Asthma is one of those things. I don't know if you've had a little bit of asthma or a lot of asthma. But you've had asthma. What actually is, is if you sat there and you're wheezing and you're chest is heaving like mad and you've got an irritation in your lungs beyond compare right and it, it's like you're talking of an old man and you're only 12 13 14 and the tablets that you take make your heart beat at double the speed you know my mother took these tablets once thinking they were paracetamols she thought she was having a heart attack you know what I mean? So she says, how the hell do you take them damn things? I said, well, I don't know, but they opened the alveoli. They opened the airways. So basically, I don't know if they prescribe them anymore. But I was nervous. 
And I was a very, very nervous child. I wouldn't go outside. I wouldn't go anywhere, ever, on my own. I was looked after by my mum and dad. I'm an only child. And so basically, I was in a bubble. Um, and while I was at school, they said, Andrew is a loner. Andrew is a loner. He walks alone. And I had my fantasies. In my, in my day, um, my thing was television. And television, I was lost in cult television. And you will remember a, G a Jerry Anderson show called Thunderbirds. And I used to love Thunderbirds. So much so that when they used to say, describe a dustbin lid for your essay in English, I'd always bring Thunderbirds into it. You know, International Rescue came to the scene. But I got to this day, and I was in, I got a job, because my, all my friends had left, and they all got a job in a bakery. And I went, oh, good, bakery, all right then. I bet I'd go to a bakery. And I mean, said, the flower, the flower, oh, the flower. You'd said, your chest go in, love. You'd, oh, you'll be poorly. Anyway, I said, look, mum, can I ever get a go? My friends are there now. They're all getting jobs. They're all working at this bakery. And one day they walked in, and I'd, we're doing you know, custards. I'll, never, I'll change your mind towards custards. And they had a custard there, right? And you always know the outer paper. You'll never look at a custard again, I'm sorry. You'll never look at a custard the same way again. And there's an outer co uh, casing of pastry. And I learned to do a block. Now, there's a machine that actually does it, but this was such an old thing. And you had to pull this lever down and go like that. And it got hot, and you were like that. It took me... 12 hours to learn how to lose, use this machine to do about 400 of these things. This guy used to come along and do them in two. You know, I was thinking, oh. And then there were a girl come in and she could do them in less than him. I'm thinking, I'm useless. But you're saying, where are you taking me here? One day, two of the young bakers, apprentices that we as know them now, turned up and um, they were leaping around the bakehouse. Jumping and leaping around and thinking, what the chuff is this? They'd been to see a film. They'd been to see a film called King Boxer with a guy called Low Lie. I said, what's all this? And everybody had to go see this film. So everybody went to see this film. And when you saw it, it was a Shaw Brothers film. And Shaw Brothers jumped on the bandwagon rather quickly than Golden Harvest. And they jumped in there and they'd shipped this to the, around the world. And everybody watching this song, jumping on trampolines and jumping high and all this. And everybody was laughing and seeing them do these martial arts moves. And everybody got inspired. And that was the film that started people going to their karate clubs. And of course, then the spoof clubs turned up that were doing kung fu, quick mix, you know, add water, stir it round, you've learned kung fu. Daily Mirror brought out a book with Chi Su. He became one of my instructors. Um, 17 lessons on how to destroy somebody. I didn't say exactly what it said on it, but it was done by the Daily Mirror. And you could actually buy this book. In 17 lessons, you could be an absolute expert in martial arts. I'm sure that's not exactly right. If you've stand in Wing Chun position for hours and hours, unlike I have, uh, <coughs> you don't learn it very quickly. It takes years to get it right. But where am I coming from? It's quite simple. In 1974, in January, just more like February, because it took me three weeks to get, you will never see it much these days, but the AB cinema, ABC cinema in Leeds. Every day, my friends used to go, one week we'll go see a horror picture and we'll go see one picture that you want to see. And it was my turn. I said, I want to go see Enter the Dragon. I want to see what's all this about. I'd seen, Kung, I'd seen King Boxer, but I won't say that. And I was very, very much into David Carradine. Oh, <gasps> David Carradine. I loved him. Really quiet, really simple. Very bitch like me then. Very quiet person. Very humble. And every time somebody came up to beat him, he just dodged out of the way, smacked him one, did it in slow motion, of course. And it was great. But Carradine was the one. He was the one. He, I, loved the, I loved the sayings he said. I loved the philosophy he was coming out with. It all, I really started to feel inspired. But 73 came with Carradine. 74 came with this guy called Bruce Lee. And every time I went to see this Enter the Dragon movie, I never got to see it. I stood outside for an hour and a half, and the queue was a mile long. And I'm thinking, what's up with this film? What's, what's so important? And so I thought, oh, 
was going on. Anyway, I walked and I said to my friend, we're going to have to go two hours early to go see this film. And so two hours early, we went three weeks later. And I walked in there, not knowing what to expect. Now, at that time, my wife says I'm, I'm taller, but I always thought I was about five foot seven. And then, you look at the weight here, all right? I was about 100, well, whatever, 120, 140 pounds. And so, this little skinny guy on the screen, little skinny guy, super skinny. Every muscle was absolutely, ooh, absolutely fantastic. And again, and you and got this wonderful opening scene. And there's this big guy fighting this little skinny guy. And I'm thinking, he'll never beat him. That's him finished. He's going to be flattened. And then all of a sudden, this little skinny guy beats him, puts him into a, a grappling hold. That's it, finished. I thought, wow. And then for the rest of the, what, 90 minutes or whatever of the movie was, my jaw dropped. And I was like, whoa. And it was like, if you've ever been to a pop concert, the rush of the sound hitting you, when you can feel the sound hitting you. And it took me years to realize what Bruce Lee did. Yes, he, he was a perfectionist, but what he did was he put his energy, his martial arts skills and his energy into celluloid. So when you watch that film on the big screen, it hits you. It has to hit you. The punches, the sound, and stuff like that, that's all added on. It doesn't make a sound like that. If you've ever been in a fight, it doesn't go smack, smack, and make all them wonderful noises. It doesn't, honest. You know it doesn't. But it's all good high-impact stuff. And when people were coming out after the film, they were all jumping and leaping and making noises like Bruce Lee. And of course, we all got the nunchuckers. Everybody got a pair of nunchucks. And even today, if you open a magazine or you look on online, there's thousands of these nunchuckers. And so I like to dispel myths, quite simply. Nunchuckers is just like what Indiana Jones had with a bullwhip. It was a prop for Bruce Lee to show his skills. It was just something that Bruce went along and said, well, if there's a lot of them, I'm not going to be able to beat them all up. If I've got a tool with me or a weapon with me, I'm going to be able to knock them down. He didn't like using knives in Big Boss, or he have continued using knives. He wanted his own signature thing. And so, of course, he used nunchuckers. If you've ever used nunchuckers, and if you ever see the outtakes that Bruce does, they are the most unwieldy, hard thing. And if you ever go like this, if you ever just pick your elbow up now, just pick your elbow up and put a little, your finger into about here, right? If you really press and hard and mess about, you'll find a little sensitive nerve. Now, you just think, right? And with our first speaker will actually tell you this. You whack it round, it hits you under the elbow, and your arm goes dead. And I did that, and I got, oh, my goodness me, I've done my arm in. I'll never, it was like that. It was just like that, and hanging down. I thought, oh, my mother's going to kill me. I've done these things, and I'm, I'm never going to be able to use my arm again. Well, of course, it just deadened the nerve. But you didn't know that for a while. So I thought, that's it, that's fine. But again, let's dispel the myth of non chuckers But the main importance was Bruce. And because Bruce had given me that wave, I went like thousands to learn martial arts. And first I did Shotokan. And my mother went, you go into this church hall, that's where we used to lurk, something like this, and the dust on the floor, oh, your asthma, oh, your asthma, it'll kill you, oh, oh, you can't. And I went, but because I was determined, determined to find what he'd got, determined to find what that little bit is, and now where's the emotion comes in? I saw Bruce Lee on the screen, and I thought, if I can have 10%, of what he's got, I'll be all right. And Bruce Lee gave me more than 10% because I set out on my quest. Thanks to my mum, 94, she's still living. And she sent me to Hong Kong with a friend who when opened, his, opened his book when I was doing English, had a picture of Bruce and said, I'd love to go to Hong Kong. And that started on my quest to unearth everything I could and find out as much truth about what Bruce Lee did in his short life. 
And once I found that out, and once I started that journey, I wanted to share that with people. So in 1992, I was invited to make a documentary. And like before, the situation is that you don't know where these things come from. You think, why me? What, what, what makes me so special? But it's the motivation. It's the inspiration. And as I always say, one of the biggest things is you can do it in small groups. You can, get, you can go on your low level or you can go global. And I went global. I thought, I've got to tell everybody how great Bruce Lee was to me. Not for everybody. Some people will be inspired by football. Some people will be inspired by a great runner. But to me, martial arts has a deeper meaning. Much deeper meaning. And Bruce had that deeper meaning. Now, this is only a short talk. As you could see, I could talk for hours. Easy. But the opening music was from one of Bruce's true inspirations for me called The Silent Flute. And that music is from The Silent Flute, made by David Carradine, who I've interviewed and talked at length about how wonderful he found the script. If you ever get a chance to watch it, you have to watch it once. If you ever read the book, you have to read the book once, and then you have to watch it again. And look, it's a journey. And we're all on a journey, and we're all on a journey of growth, if we want it. If you want to stay in a little bubble like that, you can stay in that bubble. If you want to grow, you can grow. And as I was trying to say before, never look at somebody as though they're, everybody's the same. Everybody is an individual, and that's how Bruce treated people. And he basically, in my opinion, he basically turned around, and, he tra and he, when he trained people in what was we called Jeet Kune Do, and stuff like that, he took them on and he said, how can I make this person better? But there's another thing, is how can I make this person better, not just as a martial artist, but as a human being? How can I help them to be better people? And I think we've all got a message today, which is very, very similar, is that how can you improve yourself? And that's what Bruce was on about. And my thing is to make sure that people, when they talk about Bruce Lee, they have a good understanding of him, and then they may go and do their own investigations. Bruce never wanted you to copy him. He said, yes, if you use me as an inspiration, that's fine. Copy me at first, you'll have to do, because that's where you're at. But eventually go on your own journey. And that's where most martial artists go, is they go on their own journey and they have their own stories to tell. But Bruce Lee, for me, from the 1974 situation was the biggest, biggest thing that this country had. Now, America has their own way of feeling. But the British people took Bruce Lee to heart. And we took him to heart a little bit more because we were also denied his footage. And the footage we were denied was not a lot, but it was something like, if you're not allowed to see something, you'll go out your way to do it. But when you see Bruce on a comedy show, like the Bilton Bill, Milton Burl show, or when you see Bruce doing just normal acting, Bruce, just for our edification, let's go through. Bruce was a child actor. He'd done acting. He then was in a gang, and he was worried that when he was not in the gang, he was going to get beaten up by other people. So what he did was he went to William Chung and he says, you're learning Wing Chung, can I come along? It looks like the most effective thing around. And then he learned Wing Chun, and he was in there and learnt it to the best of his ability, to so much so that guys that were going there just to get away from the wives said to it, man, you're going to have to get rid of him because we don't like him, he's beating us up, and he's only a kid, right? So, so it man said, okay, Wang Chung Lung, will you take him to one side? And Wang Chung Lung really trained Bruce, Bruce Lee. And then Bruce went to America. He had enough. And the thing that I like to say is, in my opinion, in my opinion, Bruce was a martial arts genius in the fact 
He was the Mozart of martial arts. Okay? And where he comes from is that he could show him one thing one day, and you could be the expert of that. He would, Bruce would go away, and he would actually be better than you the next day because he was driven, but even he was inspired. So all I can say to you to round it up is if you watch something on Bruce Lee and it inspired, then that's fine. I'm here to keep that legacy alive as long as I can. And even now, as we talk, I'm in talks with people always to keep more and more things that I know is stuffed away in little places. And I'm trying to bring it out so that you can see it and you can make your own opinions. It's not up to make my opinion. I know my opinion. It's up to you to make your opinion on how Bruce Lee might influence you. There's many books being driven by Bruce Lee, but it's up to you to actually open the book. If you don't open the book, you'll never find out. But when you read it, you'll start going, oh, I could do that. Oh, I'd like to do that. I'll leave you the thought. Be well with you, my friend, and enjoy your journey. <laughs>